the Commission does want to increase its powers. Yes, it is a non-elected body, and I do not want the Commission to increase its powers against this House. So, of course, we are differing. Of course, the Chairman or the President of the Commission, Mr. Delors, said at press conference the other day that he wanted the European Parliament to be the democratic body of the community. He wanted the Commission to be the executive, and he wanted the Council of Ministers to be the Senate. No. No, no. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Perhaps the Labour Party would give all those things up easily. Perhaps they would agree to a single currency, to total abolition of the pound sterling. Perhaps being totally incompetent with monetary matters, they'd be only too delighted to hand over the full responsibility as they did to the IMF, to a central bank. The fact is, they have no competence on money, no competence on the economy, so yes, the right honourable gentleman would be glad to hand it all over. But what is the point in trying to get elected to Parliament only to hand over your sterling and to hand over the powers of this House to Europe? government has no intention of abolishing the pound sterling. If the hard echo evolved into much, much greater use, that would be a decision for future parliaments and future generations. It would be a decision which could only be taken once, and a decision which should not be approached in this atmosphere, but only after the greatest possible consideration. I believe both parliament and sterling have served our country and the rest of the world very well. I believe we are more stable and more influential with it. I believe it is an expression of sovereignty. This government believes in the pound sterling. I totally agree with the right honourable gentleman. That was precisely the stance we took. It is a stance we have taken on many previous occasions. The European monetary system, the European monetary system to which we belong, is a system designed for 12 sovereign states in cooperation with one another to come to a European, to come to the exchange rate mechanism. What they are proposing now, an economic and monetary union, is really the back door to a federal Europe, and we totally and utterly reject that. We would have greater economic and monetary cooperation, which can be achieved by keeping our sovereignty. Mr. Speaker, I think I would put it just a little bit differently from the right honourable gentleman, although I recognise some of the force of some of the points that he's making. I think when the proposals for, the law proposals for EMU came out, the Economic and Monetary Union, it was said immediately by my right honourable friend, the then Chancellor of the Exchequer, that this was not really about monetary policy at all. It was really about a backdoor to a federal Europe. A federal Europe taking many, many democratic powers away from democratically elected bodies to non elected ones. I believe fervently that that is true which is why I will have nothing to do with their definition of economic and monetary union.